brother, Reggie, controlled organized crime in the East End of London in the 60s. Both were jailed for life in 1969 after being convicted of murder. Ronnie Cray was let out of Broadmoor in the early 80s to attend his mother's funeral. It's thought he could now be buried in the same cemetery, a funeral likely to bring much of London's East End to a standstill. The notorious gangster had collapsed in his room at Broadmoor Hospital on Wednesday. He died this morning after being transferred to another hospital in Slough. Born in 1933 in the heart of the East End, Ronnie and his twin brother Reggie started out as boxers. They became the most feared of London's gang leaders. Ronnie, the eldest by 45 minutes, was the violent dominant partner. Their extensive protection racket, known as the firm, existed to extort money from shopkeepers, enabling the twins to visibly enjoy the high life. Desperate for fame, they cultivated the world of show business and the media. But the law was aware of them. In the mid-60s, the pair were charged with demanding money with menaces, only to be acquitted. How much does this trial cost you? It's cost us roughly £8,000. And how do you feel about that? I don't suppose anyone likes the idea of spending that money for no reason at all, you know. Does it leave you broke, or how does it, it leave It doesn't you? leave us broke, but at the same time, it's a lot of money to have to pay out the money's innocent. Ronnie held court in his front room in Bethnal Green, controlling West End protection, masterminding swindles, ordering killings over cups of tea. It was at the Blind Beggar pub in Whitechapel that Ronnie himself shot dead a rival, George Cornell. For that and another murder by Reggie, the pair were jailed in 1969. Today, at the Blind Beggar, one of their closest friends was mourning Ronnie's death. They were good guys, they were good gangsters, if you want to use such a word. They wouldn't harm women or children, they were untouchable. If people want to talk about the victims, like Jack McVitie or George Cornell and that, they were hardened criminals the same as him. They would have done to Ronnie and Reggie what they'd done to them, and that must always be remembered. Others, though, were under no illusions. For the policemen who finally caught the craze, they were far from glamorous heroes. There's no question about what prevented witnesses giving evidence to suggest that the craze were involved, and that was terror. Just absolute fear and terror. I think they were an extraordinarily murderous, effective pair of gangsters. I think there's been covered up, I say, with a lot of schmaltz, a lot of silly sentimental twaddle, but uh, they were very, very good at their job. Uh, if they hadn't started killing people, they probably would have been in the House of Lords by now.